Is there any switch on this one? Ah, okay. Okay. So, da, da, I'm saying something. That's okay. Michael, can you hear us? Speak again. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Okay. Better? Thank you. <laughs> okay, so. Um, Yes, yes, I'm leaving on Monday. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for uh, the invitation, Professor Wang. Extended to present some uh, of my work in uh, quantum randomness. I had the opportunity in the last days to see a beautiful country, a beautiful campus in a beautiful city. It's my first visit to Perth, and I'm really impressed. I, I knew about the many important results uh, Professor Wang's research group had, but I didn't know how, how beautiful the campus is. So um, what I'm going to talk today is uh, a view about quantum randomness, which uh, may not the may not be the mainstream view. And I'm going to try to give you some, some, some glimpses of uh, how to look at quantum randomness, which is normally postulated from a mathematician point of view. So, uh, Many advantages promised by quantum information theory and cryptography rely on the belief, and I, I emphasize this belief, that the outcomes of quantum measurements are intrinsically unpredictable. So this belief, this belief underlines the use of quantum random number generators to produce quantum random sequences that are truly unpredictable, unlike the old software-generated methods, which in the beginnings, 40 years ago, were called random generators. Now they are downgraded to pseudo-random generators. And 
the generation of cryptographic keys unpredictable to any adversary. Please notice here the any, to any adversary. So, um, is this belief reasonable? I, I'm going to challenge this. So, uh, for the time being, I'm not giving uh, any kind of uh, conclusion, but uh, just a warning that some of these uh, claims might not be provable mathematically. I'm not saying that they may not be true. It may not be provable. An individual event can be correctly predicted simply by chance. And the robust definition of predictability clearly has to avoid this possibility. And to understand a little bit better, I will go back to Popper, a well-known philosopher of science, who in one of his analyses of the uh, philosophical analysis, but very important analysis of the concept of predictability said, if we assert of an observable event that it is unpredictable, we do not mean that it is logically or physically impossible for anybody to give a correct description of the event in question before it has occurred. For it is clearly not impossible that somebody may hit upon such a description accidentally. What is asserted here is that certain rational, certain rational, very precisely described methods of prediction break down in certain cases. The methods of prediction which are practiced in physical science. So, no matter how we will try to define or model unpredictability, we need to be aware and we need to have a clear provision for the fact that good predictions may happen, may happen sometimes by accident and we want them to be not considered predictions according to certain specific methods developed. So, uh, the, one of the main part of this presentation will be to describe such a method, which will be a non-probabilistic method, and we will, will uh, be challenged with this possibility. So we propose a definition of predictability based on the ability of a computable operating agent to correctly predict using finite information, extract them from the system, a specific outcome or sequence of outcomes of an experiment. And the challenge, the challenge here, the challenge here is that predictions should remain correct in any arbitrarily long but finite set of repetitions of the experiment. So in order to eliminate a number of possibilities of correctly guessing by chance, the predictor will be challenged to offer a new prediction which should be again correct. And there will be no limit in the possible set of challenges addressed to, to the predictor which will have to prove its ability to return correct predictions. Now, um, as I said, this will be a non-probabilistic non uh, type of uh, prediction. And uh, the experiment we have in mind would be an experiment E producing a single bit, zero or one, 
And from a physical point of view, with a particular trial of E, we associate a parameter lambda, which will say this is a state of the universe, which we are not going to know, but it will be, it will be used, possibly used by the predictor to extract finite information in order to predict the outcome of the experiment. So this finite information would be extracted in a physical sense by a physical device. So an extractor is a physical device selecting a finite amount of information from lambda without altering the experiment E so mathematically, mathematically, what this boils down is from the whole environment, the whole universe where the experiment is going to be executed, the extractor produces a finite string of bits, psi of lambda, which will be used to make predictions. Now, this, this uh, information can include the theory, the physical theory, or the physical theories which are believed at that moment to describe the phenomenon, uh, you, you know, the date, time, temperature, anything which, which has some bearing on the uh, uh, running of the experiment. Once again, it should be finite and should not alter in any way the running of the experiment. Now, uh, a predictor, E, so this is the agent which will make predictions about the outcomes of the experiment, E, is an algorithm, a program, PE, which stops on every input and produces three times of responses. Zero, one, or predictions withheld. So we allow the predictor, we allow the predictor to say from time to time, I don't know. Right? In the other situation, the predictor has to return zero and one, and as you, you know, guess by now, the predictor has to be correct in case he returns a prediction, and the prediction has to be exactly the result of the experiment. So, PE can use as input the information, the finite information extracted by the physical extractor, must be passive. This means it must not disturb or interact with E in any possible way. So what I'm describing here are some of the ideal conditions for running the experiments and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, predicting these outcomes of the experiment. Now a predictor, P, for an experiment E, predicts correctly an instance of a running uh, of this experiment, this experiment, if when the extractor for the, an instantiation of E with parameter lambda is given, then lambda, psi of lambda is taken at input and the predictor returns zero or one. This means it refrains from making no prediction and the output is equal to X, the result of the experiment. So the predictor, once again, has to be a software, a program. This software can take an arbitrary amount of finite information regarding the experiment and relative to this, relative to this information, Without interfering with the running of the experiment, it has to return, it has to return the correct output of the experiment. So in this case, we said that in this specific 
in uh, 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 running of the experiment, the predictor has correctly predicted the outcome of the experiment. Now, if I run again the experiment, then, then uh, again this uh, uh, psi of lambda will be changed. Lambda itself may be changed because after the experiment has been run, maybe the universe is in a different state. But all the time, all the time, the finite part of the information is available in a unitary form to, to the predictor, and these two conditions should be satisfied. Now, how to challenge? It's, as I noted at the very beginning, it's not impossible, it's not impossible to, to have a correct prediction by, by accident or by, by luck, right? How to make this impossibility less and less likely? The only way to do it is to ask the predictor to do it again like my granddaughter says, again, and again, and again. So, how to do this? Well, the predictor is k correct for psi. If, if challenged, if challenged, there is a number of replication of the experiment could be very, very, very long, this number, and this number is n, which is, of course, greater than the given k, such that if the experiment is repeated n times with associated parameters lambda 1, lambda n, producing the outputs x1, xn, the predictor outputs the sequence of predictions pe corresponding to lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n. Remember, in this sequence of predictions, we may have zeros, we may have ones, but also we may have predictions withheld. The condition is that no prediction in this sequence is incorrect. So if I look at the zeros and the ones in this sequence, they all have to be exactly the outputs of the experiment at that specific stage. And secondly, secondly, at least k correct predictions should be in the sequence. So, in you know, assuming assuming that assuming that we we have k equals ten, right? So the the predictor will be challenged to predict correctly at least ten times. This means that the experiment will have to be replicated at least 10 times, but 10 times may not be enough because in this uh, sequence, sometimes the predictor may not return a, a, a prediction. So the predictor should continue till k correct predictions have been obtained and no incorrect prediction has been ever returned. So if, the, if k is 10, I say, right, this is correct. Then, then I say, no, now I change my mind, I want k 100. Then I may get uh, an end which could be 1,000, and then, and then I get this 100, and so on. So a predictor will be correct for this experiment when it will be k correct for any possible k. So this means the predictor has, been, has to be capable of returning all its correct predictions, no incorrect one, and as many as I want if we allow sufficiently long runs of the experiment and the predictions to, to happen. So if PA is k correct for psi, for all k, we, we say that p is the correct predictor for, for the experiment e for psi. Now, 
There is a, 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 a problem here, a problem here with the infinity used in the definition. This infinity here is potential, and I will show you mathematically how to deal with this potential infinity because, you know, practically, practically, we can't do it more than finitely many times. But if we want to prove that some, some phenomenon, given uh, some information, and once again, this information can contain the theory on which we believe the experiment is run, should be correct for any, for any, uh, for any possible k. Now, we will need now to take care of two other issues. One is how to say, if it's ever possible, that a single bit has been correctly predicted. And then secondly, we will need to say how a sequence, an infinite sequence, theoretically, has been correctly predicted. So the, the, the difficulty here, the difficulty here, apparently, is the fact that uh, I, I need, I can't, if, 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 uh, if PE in the first instance has returned a correct, correct prediction, I can't say at that stage that this was a correct predi prediction because of the possibility of guessing, right? But still, within this framework, we can define correctly this situation. So I say that the outcome X of a single trial of the experiment E performed with parameter lambda is predictable with certainty. So this is not a probabilistic prediction. If there exists an extractor psi and a predictor P, which is correct for psi, and produces for this trial exactly the outcome. So in other terms, in other terms, this can be inserted into this dynamics of ever and longer and longer challenges for the predictor to prove its ability to correctly predict the outcomes. Now, accordingly, PE correctly predicts the outcome X and never makes an incorrect prediction and can produce arbitrarily many correct predictions if challenged. Now, if we think about the possibilities, the theoretical possibilities that this experiment, this experiment is run to infinity, infinitely many times, then the sequence, then the sequence of, of predictions will be a sequence of zeros, ones, and, and withheld predictions. And in this sequence, in this sequence of predictions, I will have, I will have no incorrect prediction, and after, after every withheld prediction, I will have at least one correct prediction following it at some stage. So I can have a run on one billion of withheld predictions, but then I have one which is correct. And, and so, so in the end, in this sequence, I may have infinitely many withheld predictions, but also infinitely many correct predictions. Now, for a given quantum system in a particular state, we will say that an observable is value definite if the measurement of that observable is predetermined to take a potentially hidden value. So, now I am, I am trying to apply this model to understand, to understand a specific type, a specific type of quantum, of quantum uh, experiment and measurement and try to prove that it is, it is 
unpredictable. And what I am going to do is to measure, to measure a specific quantum observable about which one can prove that it is value indefinite. So for this, for this, uh, for this aim, I will use some, some physical assumptions and I will use uh, a very important, uh, at least from a mathematical point of view, but I believe also from a physical point of view, theorem by Cohen and Specker proven exactly 50 years ago. So, if no such predetermined value exists, then the observable will be value indefinite. Now, from a classical point of view, all observables are value definite. From a point of view of quantum physics, some observables are value indefinite. And this theorem by Cohen and Specker shows how they exist. There will be one, one important mathematical issue to note before I, 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 I give you some more details. The theorem, the theorem says that always one in any finite uh, set of uh, large enough set of observables in a Hilbert space of dimension at least three, and this is one of the limitations of the result, there will be a value indefinite observable. And I want to measure exactly this one. The theorem does not tell me which one is. So from a mathematical point of view, to use a theorem, I need to prove a constructive or effective form of the theorem which will be able to tell me exactly, or the experimenter exactly, which observable to measure to be sure that it is value indefinite. So, now, how to model the question, how to, to, to look at this uh, 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 idea of uh, quantum, physically, quantum physical quantity to be value definite, I will go back to Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen famous uh, articles in which a sufficient criterion of physical reality is, uh, is uh, presented and we will adopt the following EPR principle. If and then, then I'm using the, the EPR uh, uh, words. Without in any way disturbing a system, we can predict with certainty the value of a physical quantity, then there exists a definite value prior to observation corresponding to this physical quantity. So uh, this principle also justifies the Eigenstein principle Angestein's principle, if a quantum system is prepared in the state psi, then the projection observable P psi is value definite. Now, um, with these two principles, with these two principles, I will uh, present now um, the cohen specker theorem, as I said, 50 years old theorem, in the form, in one of the uh, form, uh, well, modern forms. So, the Hilbert space here will be Cn and n will be greater or equal 3. This is an important limitation. We will see a little bit later. Say, so a context in this Hilbert space is a set of n-compatible commuting observable. And we are going to consider as assignments as assignments, partial functions V defined from a set of uh, observable to 0 and 1. And partial here means that the function which is defined on a specific set of observables can take three values, 0, 1, or undefined. So on some, on some observable, the partial assignment function may be undefined. So, the cohen specker theorem says that in an n greater than 3 dimension Hilbert space, there is a finite set of observable such that 
no value assignment V can have the following three properties. Number one, value definiteness. This means V is total. This means for any observable in O, V returns zero or one. Second, non-contextuality. We said that this function depends on P only. And the third property is quantum mechanics predictions are satisfied. So this means for every context C, I have all zero and one one. So the, the uh, theorem, which is, if you want, a pure mathematical statement, says that no matter how you will define how will define this uh, assignment partial functions V, then this, there exists always a finite set of observables for which these three properties cannot hold true in the same time. It doesn't say which one is true and which one is not true. It says only that these three properties are incompatible for this uh, final set of projections. And uh, um, I think that the uh, smallest set, if I'm not wrong, of O of such projections in, N, in C3 will be 18. So that's, that's the theorem. It's, it's a, it's a, a non-go theorem. I, I'm not going to discuss more about this, but I would like to mention that this is a stronger no-go theorem than Bell theorem, which says that some statistical properties cannot happen. Here, this theorem says that always I can extract a finer set of observable in such a way that these three properties are rigorously not all satisfied. One should fail. So now, now we either reject quantum mechanic, but we depart from the quantum theory, so probably we are very less inclined to do this, or we reject non-contextuality, so definite values depend on measurement context, and the third property would be value definiteness we reject. Some observable will be value definite. Will be, uh, will be value indefinite. Now, a rather accepted, not unanimous, not, not even uh, Trump has unanimity, option is assumed. So in what follows, we will assume that quantum mechanics is re reflected is accepted and non-contextuality as well and adopt value indefiniteness as a model of quantum indeterminism. Now, once again, this is crucial if we don't believe in these choices, it very, it, in what, what I'm going to talk more will be very little sense. But as I said, uh, there is a, 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 a quite, quite large class of quantum physicists at least prepared to accept uh, this, this scenario. So in this case, Cohen-Specker theorem says that some observables are value indefinite and some quantum measurements are indeterminate. So in order to produce, to produce a form, I'm not saying I, to produce quantum randomness because I believe that may be different forms of quantum, of quantum randomness, would be to measure, to measure such a value indefinite observable. Now from uh, an operational point of view, this raises the question which I, I, I mentioned a little bit before. The question is, how do I, how do I identify how do I identify in this final set of 18 or even less 
but definitely more than two, observable, Z observable or one observable which is value indefinite. The theorem doesn't tell me anything. And uh, one of my co-authors, who is a physicist, Karl Zvozil from the uh, Technical University of Vienna, in the beginning of our, our cooperation, was very skeptical about the, uh, the possibility of identifying such an observable, arguing that this kind of uh, impossibility result cannot be operationalized. How could, he would say, make it operational, something which is negative? Okay, so um, now I will present uh, 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 two results in, in, in the, this framework. The first one is we assume that the principles of EPR and eigenstate are satisfied. And we consider a quantum system prepared in the state psi in a dimension three Hilbert space. And let phi be the, any state which is neither orthogonal nor parallel to psi. Then the projection observable corresponding to phi is value indefinite under any non-contextual and value value excitement satisfying the predictions of quantum mechanics. So in other terms, in other terms, in other terms, in order to get, to get a value indefinite observable, you start with the system prepared in a, psi, in a state psi, and then take any other state which is not orthogonal, not parallel to this state, and we can prove that this is value indefinite. Now, uh, accepting that definite values exist for certain observable and behave non-contextual is enough, according to this result, to locate, to locate a specific value indefinite observable. And uh, this eliminates the need to postulate quantum value indefiniteness. In fact, in fact, even from this form of this result, from this form of the result, you can guess that almost every observable in CN is value indefinite. So, you know, value indefinite is the norm in, in, in among observable, not, not, not the exception. But still, still, with this result only, we couldn't, you couldn't measure exactly one in order to, you know, to construct a quantum random generator if you wish to do this. Now, uh, under the adopted interpretation, coin specchia theorem shows that quantum mechanics is indeterministic, there exists value indefinite observable, but these results show that some observables can be proven to be value indefinite, and globally, globally the indeterminists in quantum mechanics, under these two hypotheses, all the time we have to have in mind them, is, is a norm. It's, very largely spread. It's not, not, not uh, uh, an accident. So this, this, this uh, uh, stimulates an analogy with another result which I, I worked uh, on uh, a number of years ago. If you remember Gödel's incompleteness theorem, Gödel's incompleteness theorem says that if you have a, a system which uh, is consistent, free of contradiction, and it contains uh, the uh, piano arithmetic, enough arithmetic, and the axioms are generated by an algorithm, that in such a s system there are true and unprovable statements. Now, those true and unprovable statements are not accidents, they are the norm. In the same way, like 
undecidable, unprovable, true and unprovable statements in Gödel's theorem are the norm in the same way the value indefinite observables are the norm here. So we are ready to ask the question, are quantum mechanical measurements are unpredictable? Now, I will not be able to answer this question in its full generality, but I am going to ask it for a class of experiments. So I'm going to consider an experiment producing a Hilbert space of dimension at least three, in which a quantum system is prepared in a state psi and a value indefinite observable is measured and produces a single bit x. Assuming the EPR and eigenstate principles, we can prove the following result. If E is an experiment measuring a quantum value indefinite observable as before, then for every predictor PE using any extractor, PE is not correct for Psi. So no matter, no matter how you will define the finite information available to the predictor, no matter how powerful, no powerful is this predictor, it will fail to predict the outcomes of the experiment measuring a given value indefinite observable. And if we, 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 we look this from the infinite point of view, in an infinite repetition of the experiment measuring a quantum value indefinite observable, the sequence generated has a property that no single bit, no single bit of this sequence can be correctly predicted. So not that you cannot predict the sequence itself, but no individual bit produced by this experiment can be predicted by any possible predictor defined as before. So now I'm, I'm going to, 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 to conclude this presentation with some more general ideas relating indeterminism and quantum randomness just to understand from this perspective what is the relation between these concepts. So quantum randomness is normally postulated that it is generally reduced to the indeterminism of quantum measurement along this uh, a line of reasoning because the outcome is indeterministic. There is no way to predict it, hence it is random. Yeah? Do you agree with this uh, justification? However, however, indeterminism in general does not imply Randomness and randomness does not imply indeterminism. And I have given you some, some counterexample to both of these possible uh, implications. Pseudo randomness. Pseudo randomness is a form of randomness, but it is happily married to a pure deterministic way to generate it, just a piece of software. Now, as a exam another example, coin tossing. Chaoticity, which is a very important form, it's a very important form of, of randomness, is not, it's computable. It's not, it's not uh, 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 based on anything which is indeterministic. The reason of, of chaoticity is not in the indeterminacy, it's in the impossibility of, of, of having the infinite uh, uh, information from, say, from the seed, if we, 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 we look in, uh, say, in the simplest form. Uh, Chaitin's omega number, you may have heard of this. Has anybody uh, heard of this omega number, Chaitin? Yes. So, this is, the, in, 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 in very simple terms, the probability that a specific type of universal Turing machine called prefix-free universal Turing machine eventually stops. 
So you have a, a, a universal machine which is capable of simulating any other machine. And this machine has a specific property which means that the end of each program for this machine, like uh, most programming language, this has an end marker. And then you, you, you pose the following problem. You take from all the possible programs one at random, but this random is not the random I'm going to discuss about uh, next, and you ask what is the probability that the machine will eventually stop on this program. This is a completely different way to look at the uh, halting problem which is incomputable. You get an, a number for which its sequence of bits is completely deterministic. This sequence of bits of this probability depends intrinsically in a deterministic way on the underlying prefix free Turing machine, which is, in algorithmic information terms, Martin Leff randomness. So it is a highly random type of infinite binary sequence. In particular, it is Borel normal, it is incomputable, it satisfies an infinity of symptoms of, of randomness, but not all, as we see. So, again here, you have a very strong form of algorithmic randomness which is happily generated through a de pure deterministic process. Now, um, Schrodinger equation as well, you know, Schrodinger equation is, is deterministic and, and, and it coexists with, with, with quantum randomness because quantum randomness is about measurement. Schrodinger equation is about dynamics and, and, and evolution. You can't read the outcomes of a measurement on, on, on Schrodinger equation. And there are many other examples, starting with cellular automata, non-deterministic Turing machines, and, and, and so on. So now, to understand better why there is this, uh, this uh, if you wish, lack of implications between indeterminism and, and randomness, let's look at how randomness can present itself. Randomness can be presented in two forms, as a product randomness, modest as algorithmic randomness by a branch of mathematics which is called algorithmic information theory or Kolmogorov complexity, for which uh, Chaitin, the author of the Omega number, is one of the founders along Kolmogorov and Solomonov. And this theory, this theory looks at the sequence without knowing and without caring how they have been produced and studies how random they are. So, uh, uh, true perfect randomness does not exist. It's one of the first results proved here, but actually, historically, this result has, proved, has been proved by uh, uh, a British, a British uh, uh, logician and philosopher uh, Ramsey in what is nowadays called Ramsey theory in which is, is shown that for the specific case of binary sequences in every, every, not with probability one, in every pa infinite binary sequence there are infinitely many correlations. So, true randomness which will assume no correlations, cannot exist. Now, um, there are degrees of randomness based on resources. So, if I will give you, I will give you the billion of digits of pi from uh, 100,000 uh, on, and you look at them, you will believe that they are random. But this is because you don't have the computational or the information I have. I know that this has been generated by an algorithm. You may not know this. So randomness is not something which is absolute. Depends on the, with respect to the theory or with respect to the computational power an agent may have to decide whether it looks random or not. But no matter how much theory and how much computational power, you cannot avoid, for instance, Ramsey's theory, which says that always there are correlations. 
There is no true, no, no uh, perfect randomness, no matter how you will try to, to generate. And unpredictability is a requirement for randomness, but not, not uh, the only one. Now, there, are, there is a second view on randomness, which is called process randomness, which has no mathematical formalization, as for, this is for good reasons, can be accessed, validated only with theory or product randomness, and it's the, if you wish, reflected and illustrated in the best way by the, you know, quantum physicist, well, a certain quantum physicist saying that quantum randomness is true randomness, right? It's postulating something. Un unforgettable here, this cannot be consistently done with mathematics. There is no true, no, no perfect randomness. Randomness is not in the world. The randomness doesn't float the, like clouds or say. It is in the interface between our theoretical descriptions and reality as accessed by measurement. Randomness is unpredictability with respect to an intended theory and measurement. So this is why, for instance, you, you know, uh, Schrodinger equation, you know, doesn't help you in any way because it cannot be related to, to measurement. So uh, in, 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 in models of quantum mechanics like uh, uh, many worlds, randomness does not exist as well. Now, uh, with this in mind, we, we adopt a, a third principle, EPR with lowercase letters. If a repetition of, a measure, of measurements of an observable generates a computable sequence, then this implies these observables will value definite. So this means behind this, there is this software or algorithm which decides, predicts these outcomes. And adopting this principle, we can prove that an infinite repetition of the experiment E we discussed before, measuring a quantum value indefinite observable, generates a bi-immune infinite sequence. This means a sequence which is incomputable, but it is much more incomputable. Any possible software claiming to compute the bits of this sequence can succeed only for finitely many bits. There is a moment where it fails completely to infinity. So this theorem, the theorem 4 does not imply this, uh, this result. Now, uh, I will, I will, I will uh, uh, close with uh, uh, two open problems. One, assume non-contextuality. Theorem 1 does not hold in two-dimensional Hilbert spaces. So uh, the original cohen specker and our version 2, they require at least dimension 3. And it's interesting to see whether uh, it is still possible to have a similar theorem for this two-dimensional Hilbert space. And this is, because, uh, this is because all the quantum random generators which are on the market and generates a huge wealth to their uh, companies, even if they are genuine, some are not, but if they are genuine, they, they, they are based on a measurement in a two-dimensional Hilbert space. So our results do not apply. This does not mean that they may not be true, but the way we did it does not give you. And the most important, the most important uh, uh, result, which we would like to, to have, it, it resists, is how, how random is the sequence produced by the experiments we have just described. So, by immunity gives you the minimal reason to say these sequences have more randomness than pseudo-random sequences. 
because one is computable, the other is not. But it gives you a little bit more than this. But this is the, up the very weak level of algorithmic, algorithmic randomness. Ideally, ideally, and this will be work for a cooperation between a physicist and a mathematician, would be to find another principle, not, not too strong, which will allow us to prove that the experiment, this experiment, for instance, of measuring a value indefinite observable, generates a sequence, for instance, as, as, as random as Chaitin's omega number. This will be, this will be a, a, a crown result if one could, 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 could uh, obtain this. Now, um, uh, these are some of the references I used to, to, for, for this presentation. Uh, Professor Wang has the, a copy of the slides, so if anybody would like a copy, please ask. Uh, and I, I will be happy to, to, to talk more. For the moment, I thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, yes. Well, uh, uh, as I said, as I said, um, randomness can be looked, and what you propose to look is to look at the process of generating some randomness. Yeah, and uh, then there is some 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 indeterminism in that process. Uh, uh, two facts. In, in order to 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 sort of uh, validate at least mathematically the quality of the randomness, you have to look at the sequences produced by this. And uh, 